This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. My biggest criticism of the kind of old guard of Pacifica was not that they're actually bad guitars. <laughs> They kind of all look a little bit too much like the very entry level. But I think they're probably better kind of spec wise than an equivalent kind of Fender Mexican guitar. And this coil tap is definitely useful. Looking actually at Yamaha's kind of uh, strategy report from I think 2022 or something like that, and it was aimed at their shareholders. You know, like you get these corporate things where they kind of write their plans and stuff. And guitars are something like nine percent of their business. And yeah, I think most of us probably kind of consider the Yamaha Pacifica stuff as you know part of the education system more than anything. I think over the world Yamaha. Have been quite uh, instrumental in sort of music education and you know providing quality budget instruments now that's all well and good but I think my issue with even you know the, the, this was the top of the range the 612 is that it's kind of you know it apparently it was inspired by the California session stuff, but if you actually look at the early Pacificas from Rich Lasner, they're, they're not safe, they're not particularly conservative, whereas I, I feel like the Pacifica kind of morphed into a fairly sort of blocky, it seems like most of the decisions are around making it simple to manufacture rather than exactly what a guitarist might want or need, or kind of pushing what a guitar could be. That's not to say that there isn't some quality stuff on here. You've got the Wilkinson Trem, which 
obviously this is an aftermarket type of thing that you might put in uh, a quality guitar. Um, Seymour Duncan pickups, again, an aftermarket thing which you might seek out to put in a guitar. A Graftech nut, Grover tuners, like on the 612, what they did was essentially, you know, put in the sort of things that you might want on a guitar. Um, but what it doesn't really do is transform the guitar from being what essentially looks like a fairly standard Pacifica still. And I think that is where the the, the problem was with the Pacifica, right? Uh, it was kind of, it had a lack of sex appeal in a lot of ways. Um, you know, this is not the sort of guitar that you see professional players playing particularly uh, anymore. Uh, whereas it used to be the case that, you know, Pacifica players included guys like Ty Tabor, Michael Lee Ferkins, you know, big players. And um, these days you don't see the Pacifica around too much. Specifically, I think, because they didn't have this aspirational kind of model. For me, the, the newer Pacifica actually looks like it has been designed from the ground up and it's actually much more of a piece. It doesn't look like uh, to me, th th this is kind of like a, a mod shop type instrument. It, it does look, when I look at them up close, like this is the, the much more refined design. And I think that is the word that I would use for it, refined, maybe sleek. Uh, it might not be for everyone still, but at least to me, it doesn't seem like um, a utilitarian uh, kind of basic instrument, which is something about the Pacifica it has that kind of basic feel to it. Um, so yeah, for me, I think they've done it and I think they really have improved it. I prefer the pickups on this. They have a bit more zing to them. The Revstar controls, I really like the look of. I think that's good to have something distinguishing it from something that is kind of Fender-ish based or trying to pitch up against Fender. Um, the Goto hardware, I think is, you know, now probably kind of the industry leading stuff, except for maybe hip shop. And so it's good to have that on there. Um, really stable stuff. I think moving the truss rod adjustment to here kind of cleans up the look of the headstock in a way, as well as being something that we see on higher end guitars. Stainless steel frets, again, that's a thing that I think um, with Sir Anderson Ibanez more recently has become a, a bit of a premium thing that we've been wanting some of the larger manufacturers to consider, you know, is that something that could be done? I really like the fretboard markers. And again, like the, the thing about the older Pacificas was that the fret bar, fretboard markers weren't traditional, right? They had a bit of a look, a bit of an aesthetic. This kind of harks back to the Revstar as well. So there's a bit more consistency among the range, not just uh, things that have been built because they are have been built that way for years. It's a bit more, I don't think, considered.
for me, they have done the job fantastically well. I think that these are guitars that look much more like the sort of thing that you're going to see professional players um, considering. Uh, Price-wise, I think they're priced about as well as they could be. Um, there is a, a little bit of a gap in this area of the market, I feel like. If you think about like a Sir or a Fender Custom Shop instrument now, they're like three and a half thousand. This is priced more like the Fender sort of professional range or the Ibanez AZ Prestige. But actually, I think probably not built in as high quantities as either of those things. Um, the, the Japanese electric guitar operation doesn't seem to churn things at a huge rate. If you check stock levels and see where you can find these, I bet you you probably find Fender Custom Shop guitars in a lot more places and in stock than you find Japanese um, Yamaha stuff. For instance, like the Rev Stars were not that easy to get hold of. I don't think you're going to find these super easy to get hold of. Um, I think that is specifically because they don't build them in huge, huge quantities. And i that's the sense I get. I don't have anything to back that up. Um, but I think the Yamaha Japan operation probably more acoustic guitars are, are, are what they're building there than electric guitars. Again, I don't have anything to actually back that up or um, anything like that. But these aren't, I don't think, built in huge quantities. The Indonesian model is slightly different in that it doesn't have uh, what I think sets this apart from the older Pacifica as well, which is that this neck is actually a bit less flat. So we've got a compound radius going from 10 to nearly 14. And I think actually, yeah, I, I prefer that less of a kind of, uh, I don't know, flat feeling thing for chords and stuff. The, the 10 inch radius is definitely preferable uh, for me. Um, I wouldn't mind 10 inches the whole way, to be fair. Um, but yeah, I think they've done it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. You know, all around, I think every single decision that they've made on these, I prefer. The only one that I think is missing is A, getting one of the new Pacificas into the hands of Matteo Mancuso. That seems to me like a really big miss because he was sort of like the biggest thing at NAM, uh, just going off the back of his Rick Beato appearances. And then sort of everyone at uh, Nam seemed to have a, a, a camera on him. I feel like it would have made sense that he was playing the new Pacific. I don't know what happened there. Maybe there's a story because um, he has played the old 612. Um, but then the other thing is that I feel like they need to step up the color game. I think this is a thing with the Rev Stars as well, is that the modern finishes are not necessarily as eye catching as maybe some of the competitors. That for me is the the one area where, you know, if you're spending nearly two grand on a, a, a guitar, the looks are going to be an important part of it. And that is part of the thing that they've got so right. But I feel like there is still some way that you could even make these work better. You know, you could have models without the pick guard potentially, wood finishes. Yeah, just I think that's the one area for me where it would make sense to spend a bit more time, maybe some matte finishes or, I don't know. Of course, like, they've researched this stuff, but I just feel like what they've ended up with, colour-wise, is this black one has some sparkle, which is really nice, but some of the other stuff I feel like looks a little bit maybe, I don't know, not as eye-catching as it could be. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. The ash pink, I think, looks incredible. That's only available in the Indonesian model. The burst looks kind of interesting. Um, but I think there is definitely opportunity for some more interesting finishes. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Uh, have you played one of these? Um, yeah, I'd like to know what you thought. Uh, for me, comparing the old Pacifica to the new one, I definitely feel like looks-wise, playing-wise, tone-wise, I feel like the Pacifica's taken a, a step in the right direction. Quite a big step for me. Uh, I'm just glad to see that Yamaha have decided to move Pacifica forward in a in a new way rather than just kind of I don't know not really playing around with the formula too much which is what they've done for about 12 years for me this is the the, the most interesting thing that came out at NAM let me know yours in the comments mm -hmm.